When I was diagnosed, I was given a single digit chance of living five years. I had cancer all over my body, in my lymph nodes, in my bones, in my lungs, in my brain. I learned I had cancer in February and uh, it was quite shocking because I never thought it would happen to me. When I was diagnosed with cancer, it leveled me in a way that I didn't even think was possible. We had this sad conversation. He said, Faye, I know this research won't be able to help me in this lifetime. However, it's gonna help our kids. If you haven't been affected by cancer yet, you will be in some way. You will be. This can happen to anyone. Every day, patients are dying of cancer. And I can tell you without a doubt that there are therapies that exist today that didn't exist a year ago or two years ago that are benefiting patients right now. So just imagine where we're gonna be a year from now, two years from now, five years from now, but we need to get there fast. I want the things that are gonna happen five years from now to happen tomorrow. San Diego is very unique in the United States and in the world in having a number of world-renowned research centers with different expertise, all within a small focused area. Making drugs for cancer isn't simple. It's a pretty complicated puzzle you have to put together. There's no single person, no single lab, or even one single center that's able to do it on their own. CureBound has provided a mechanism and a positive way to get early funding for new ideas and for new future therapeutics that not only allows for, but fosters the ability of a top biologist to work with a top chemist and a top oncologist. If you provide early phase funding and bring these minds together, we're actually getting things to clinical stages and commercial stages faster. The goal of CureBound isn't to fund science projects. The goal of CureBound is to develop therapies. That's the only thing we exist for. What a lot of people have long seen in San Diego is that the scientific work being done here is really the work that's leading to the breakthroughs that is then building those products, building those companies. We have about the same amount of companies, almost 900 companies located in the science sector. So there is this natural, really tight-knit geography. You can walk between agencies or take your bicycle between agencies you do it. You don't wait for meeting in a convention next year. A thousand companies, most of them are small, scrappy outfits trying to solve hard science problems. And they do it because they can come to San Diego and they know that they'll have the scientists and the resources and the talent to do that. As much as we have made major advances in the way that many different types of cancer are treated today, we still have to have early research that is finding the future therapeutics that are gonna put the other half of cancers on their heels and permanently into remission and gone. This can really be the catalyst to what could be really the beginning of the end for cancer. UC San Diego has a phenomenal enterprise around research and education and clinical practice. However, alone, um, there's only so much that we can do. Collaborating with other organizations that are looking at the same problem, but from a different angle, is how one-on-one -on -one adds up to more than two. It's one plus one equals someone lives that otherwise wouldn't. I was treated with a drug combination, an immunotherapy, that was FDA approved not two months before I started taking it. And after given those drugs, six months later, there was only one tumor left in my brain. Here I am, let's see, 12, 13 years uh, later, those drugs allowed my life to be saved. I've been alive now for two years and was originally given three months. I never thought I'd see my daughter get married and it was the 
greatest joy to see my only child and leaves me with so much reassurance that she has a family now and then I'm not leaving her. I want to make sure our kids won't go through the same thing. I just think it'll be cool when people can look back and be like, oh, they had cancer that like wasn't treatable. It affects each and every one of us in a different way. And if you need help, you just gotta reach out and ask because we're all here. What I hope is that when my son gets to a place where he sees the pervasiveness of cancer, that he knows that this isn't a death threat, it's curable. My hope for the future is that I will 100% beat this thing and get to see my daughters grow and um, see my grandchildren, and that'll choke me up. <laughs> I'm looking forward to my daughter's first homecoming dance. I'm gonna be able to be there to see that. And I don't wanna just spend the rest of my life waiting to die from cancer. I'll speak until the day I die. I have a child with cancer and I'm not going down without a fight. You know, I don't want my daughter to give up and I'm not gonna give up.